How's it going everyone? Mitch here with the fifth installation in the Native Logic Pro 9 plugin overview. That's right. Let's get right into it. First is going to be the Microphaser plugin, which is a frequency phase shifter. Now, a phaser in general uses filters to create phase shifting in the different frequencies. This phase shifted signal is added to the original and then modulated with an LFO. This is in general what a phaser does, and the microphaser is just the base to what a phaser does. Next is going to be the modulation delay. It uses chorus and flanger uh, to, with a de variable delay. And now if you watch my other tutorial, you know that the difference between a chorus and a flanger is that delay that is put on it. So what you can do is you can achieve both a chorus and flanger effect or plug-in with this modulated delay. You can create tape speed fluctuations and metallic robot-like modulations. So since this covers both chorus and flanger, you can create all these different kinds of modulations. It is a very powerful plugin to play with and uh, uh, get some awesome stuff on your tracks. Next is going to be the phaser. It's a frequency phase shifter just like the micro phaser. The only difference is it adds a filter envelope and added parameters to it. So this is just the extended version of that micro phaser. You can add swooping or sweeping sound throughout the frequency spectrum. Next is going to be the ring shifter. It combines a ring modulator and a frequency shifter. The ring modulator modulates the source signal with an internal or side chain signal, while the frequency shifter shifts frequency groups, which means that it changes the harmonics of the signal being passed through it. Both of these combined creates metallic and clangorous effects. And just a little piece of trivia, in the 1970s it was used in jazz rock. Who would have guessed, right? Next is going to be the rotor cabinet plugin. It has a wood sheen to it, as you can see, so this is going to be from that Hammond B3 organ, and it emulates rotating speaker cabinets. Uh, like I said, it's going to be the Hammond organ's Leslie effect. It simulates a speaker rotating and a stationary microphone recording that rotating speaker which is very interesting you can get some weird effects from it. Next is going to be that scanner vibrato and it has that wood sheen to it so it's going to be from that Hammond organ again. It just emulates vibrato. A physical setup of a vibrato is an analog delay, many low pass filters, and a capacitor with a rotating pickup. This is the physical setup that this plugin emulates. You can get three different kinds of vibrato and chorus with this plugin. Next is going to be the spreader, and it widens the stereo spectrum. It periodically shifts the frequency range, which means that it changes the perceived width of the signal. Then the delay can be added to increase that perception. Personally, I use this every once in a while in background vocals, and in general on flat sounding instruments because you're increasing that stereo spectrum. Again, Logic Pro 9 is known for being a very flat sounding digital audio workstation, so to combat that, you can use this spreader on a few of your tracks if you would like, and you feel like the signals are very flat in general. Next is going to be the tremolo plugin, which is a signal amplitude modulator. All that means is that it will periodically change the volume of your track. This effect comes from vintage guitar combo amplifiers uh, when they were first coming out, so obviously this effect is going to be on mostly guitars. You can f create this and put this on vocals or other synthesizers and you can get very interesting effects out of it as well if you'd like to check that out. Next is going to be the pitch correction plugin. It's a vocal intonation corrector. It can accelerate and decelerate the playback speed. This acceleration and deceleration is what shifts the pitch of the track. The plugin reads the input track, decides where it needs to shift the signal, the pitch of the signal, and then it will accelerate or decelerate that portion so that it can line up with what it needs to be. Problem is you cannot use this on choirs or multi-voice tracks. So if you have multiple people singing through a single microphone, 
this plugin is basically useless because it reads the whole signal and it cannot differentiate between multiple voices on a single audio file. And then you can also get uh, auto-tune out of this, and I have a tutorial on that if you would like to check that out. Next is going to be the Pitch Shifter 2. It's a semitone shifter, and it pushes up or down 12 semitones, which is pretty cool, and it also slightly detunes if you'd like with the Sense option. I personally use it, the Sense option, to detune separate channels for bigger and a fuller tone. This is in vocals. I have shown you this on a few of my tutorials already. Uh, what I use, what I do now, is I have a single track, say vocals, that is sent to a middle channel. Then I send the same vocals, I bust out the vocals channels to a left and a right auxiliary track. On those left and right auxiliary tracks, I pan both ways, and I add a pitch shifter, and I make sure that I don't push up or down any semitones, I put set that to zero, and I slightly detune both channels, positive and negative, maybe two or three cents. The slightly detuned tracks with the original tracks creates a very rich and full effect across the whole stereo spectrum, and it's a great way of fattening up those vocals. So check that out if you would like, I have many tutorials on this. Next is going to be the vocal transformer. It's a vocal pitch transposer. You can transpose, augment, or diminish the melody range, or you can reduce the signal to a single note, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can ch it changes formants, but it keeps pitch the same, which is exactly why this is used. Uh, and then you cannot it cannot be used on choirs and multi-voice tracks like the previous plugin. Next, we're going to get into reverbs, and the first one is the A-verb. It's a simple reverb using just density and time. The density and time controls both the early reflections and the reverb tail, or the length of the signal. Since the density and time controls are, kind of, are combined together, they're not separate, it does not simulate real acoustic environments. But I personally use it on digital pianos because it creates a very spacey and echo effect, which I think sounds very good on those digital pianos. So check that out if you'd like. Next is going to be the Enverb plugin. It's just reverb with an adjustable diffuse tail. It employs an envelope to control the reverb tail. And you can increase the volume, you can decrease the volume, have a certain, like a, have a cutoff after a certain period. There's a lot of things that you can do with this reverb plugin. It's useful for snares and other percussion instruments because you can finely tune the reverb tail on it. And you can extrapolate this to sound design in general by creating, by putting this on any track, and you can precisely control the reverb tail, which can be something very interesting on almost any instrument in uh, signal. Next is going to be the gold verb, and it separates the early reflections and that reverb tail. Like I was saying, Averb doesn't do this, so it cannot simulate realistic rooms, but the gold verb can uh, simulate those rooms. Also is greatly used for percussion because it can emulate rooms, and you can also use it on guitars if you'd like to. Next is the Platinum Reverb, and it's just a dual band gold verb. It just has two gold verb plugins inside of it. It splits the original signal into two separate gold verb plugins, and then it adds it together before outputting the signal. And it's used in the exact same situations as gold verb. Next is going to be the Silver Verb. It's a verb with an LFO, which is interesting because the LFO modulates the reverberated signal and it includes a high and low cut. And it's used just like the Averb, but if you want that modulation on the reverb, which is a very interesting effect in many cases, definitely check out the Silver Reverb. Next is going to be the Space Designer Reverb plugin, which I think is the best native Logic plugin, which is huge because there are a lot of them. So it is an IR loading convolutional reverb, which is actually too specific for what it is, because it's just an IR loader in general. You can load in all kinds of impulse responses that don't even pertain to reverb. They can emulate a certain speaker, uh, a certain environment. You can do all of these things with an IR loader, and you can put it on guitar signals. It doesn't need to be reverb, is what I'm saying. So the convolutional reverb is actually too specific for the amount of things this plugin can do.
You can load the impulse responses into it, and it simulates very realistic environments. Like I said, you can simulate very re realistic environments with reverb or just from speakers or any anything, honestly. Uh, it employs filters, envelopes, EQ, and stereo and surround control inside of it. So it's very... Um, it, there, there's so many different things you can do with a signal just inside of the plugin. I personally use it almost all the time for my reverb. Almost all the time because I use the Averb on digital pianos. But besides that, I find myself using the Space Designer all of the time. Inside of the Space Designer are libraries that are plate reverbs, which I use almost all of the time for vocals, spring reverbs, which I use almost all of the time for guitars, and then it has room and hall reverbs, which I find myself using a lot for percussion. There are so many different things you can get out of this plugin, which is why I think it is the best Logic native Logic plugin. The only problem with it is it's very, very hard on that CPU. So if you have one of these on every single track, that's your CPU is going to be working very hard, and that's not exactly what you want. So if you want to mitigate this effect, I would bust out many tracks to a single auxiliary track where you can add reverb on all those tracks with a single Space Designer plugin. So everyone, that is going to conclude the fifth part. The next tutorial should be the final tutorial, and I will hopefully be getting that out very soon. Everyone, thanks for watching. Stay bows, comment, rate, subscribe. I'll be seeing you very soon.